I can see everybody here tonight. And I know a lot of prayers have been answered because some of the people that are here have been answered to prayer. And that sense of blessing seeing God work among us. I want to talk to you about something that maybe, I don't know if you've ever had a message on the hand of the Lord or the hand of God. But many times we, we refer to that and say, well, that preacher really had the hand of God on him tonight. Literally. And I hope we don't leave you go, wow, the preacher really had the hand of God on him, you know? And that would be great. But there's many times that we have situations that happen and we go, uh, that had to be the hand of God. And so as we think of those terms again, I think there's many, many verses and far more than what I'll share with you tonight where we see the hand of God being used in a unique way. And I wanted to share with you a, a testimony of a man that became a Christian because of the hand. And again, when I think of the hand, uh, uh, let's face it, wouldn't it be hard to work without a hand? And uh, my grandparents and also my, my great uncle and great aunt, they were deaf and so you had to use sign language to talk to them. You, you couldn't even talk if there was no hand, so to speak. And uh, they actually call it language you read it's called dactology, and that refers to fingers. So it's the finger language, okay? I don't know if you knew that or not, but now you do. Uh, but when we talk about our hands, uh, with our hands, we, we love other people. Uh, with our hands, we can also be mean and do bad things to other people. And uh, of course, nobody here would do that. But what I'm trying to say is the hand is just amazing. All the things it's capable of when it comes to communication and so forth. With our hands, we can, we can get in trouble. Or with our hands, we can do a lot of good. And so, of course, when I think of the hand of God, I think of all the good and great things that God has done for us. And so, I want to give this brief testimony here. A guy named Paul Jitsu, and he was a budding evolutionist, excuse me, evolutionist, I'll get it out, until he studied the human hand in medical school. In an anatomy class, he said, we dissected a human hand and investigating the hand, I first removed the skin, then isolated the individual tendons and the muscles as I worked my way to the bones. The tendons of one hand are aligned in the tendons cheeks like self-lubricating pulleys, allowing the hand to work in tireless and noiseless sheaths, like self-lubricating pulleys allowing the hand to work in a tireless and noiseless efforts. It was perfectly designed to carry out all the work it was called to do. Everything from lifting a small, perfectly, uh, a small object to lugging a tree trunk. Okay, that's a big difference there. Then he says, the experience deeply affected Jinso until then he had entertained serious doubts about God's existence. And seeing how each tendon was perfectly aligned with the axis of each finger, and how each finger moved in coordinated fashion when tugged by the individual tendons, he said, it became obvious to me that there was a creator who had intelligently designed and created the human hand. This was the first time in my adult life that I could say with assurance that a creator existed. It was really a spiritual experience for me. I went from doubt to certainty based on seeing God's creation. Paul Gentuso later became a Christian, a missionary physician to the Ivory Coast and a resident doctor at Nashville, Tennessee. And so I thought that was a, a handy testimony to put in there as we talk about the hand of God and trust that it be a blessing and encouragement to you as we look at God's hand. I might look in Isaiah chapter 5 verse 12 and I'm going to just use the last portion of the verse there and uh, listen to what it says here. It says, But they regard not the works of the Lord, neither consider the operation of his hands. And I thought that was an interesting wording is the word, the operations of his hands. And how many times have we had things happen that we just can't explain? Uh, how many times has God intervened? And yet as we look back, we go, well, that must have been the hand of God. Well, God must have been intervening in my behalf or on behalf of those loved ones. And so it's exciting when we see God's hand working in our life and the lives of those around us. And so 
as we get further in our message, I want to go ahead and ask God's blessing before we go any further. I'm going to ask Brother uh, Charles Gall, if you would, to pray for us, Charlie. Uh, Charles. Dear, I want to thank you for being out here Amen. Look at Isaiah chapter 5, verse 25, and again, using the last portion of the verse, it says, Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people, and he hath stretched forth his hand against them, and hath smitten them. And so when I think of things that God has done, and many times we've seen things happen in our country, and some of you might wonder, well, why did that happen the way it happened? What was taking place? And, and again, uh, we need to realize that God is a, he's a working God. We have to realize that sometimes God, he intervenes in our behalf. I say sometimes, I think he intervenes in our life a lot more than we realize. And there's times that God will go ahead and he please chasten a nation. He'll go ahead and spite those that are doing wrong. And many times we've seen some unusual things happen in our country, whether it be the government or whatever. And sometimes we have to realize that it's God that has smitten those people. God has literally judged them. And we have to realize that God, he is the judge of all judges. He will judge every judge that ever has ruled in some court case, if you please. But God also is just in his judgments. And so he knows what he's doing. And he knows things about the situation more than we do because he knows every person's heart, every person's thoughts, uh, all their intents. So we see something else that God oftentimes he justifies or justifies a situation because he's taking care of by taking care of somebody that's causing problems with one of his sheep. And so again, it's very interesting when we look at the fact that he has a smiting hand. In other words, somebody ever done you wrong? Well, it's amazing how many times that God can do something to them to get their attention. And God makes it very clear that we're not to get talking to them. Oh, they got what they deserve, you know. And uh, But to have a right spirit. And hopefully through that experience, they might come to find Christ as their Savior. We find it's also a strong hand. And folks, I can't think of anybody with a stronger hand than God himself. And uh, I remember years ago when we were working in uh, Bowie, Texas, uh, our pastor, Brother Paul Henderson, had six bronze stars. He had fought in World War II. Uh, he was at the Battle of the Bulge and other places. Uh, spent most of his time, he was trained to fight behind lines. And so a uh, whole lot of his fighting was involved in enemy territory. And so it just, uh, he was trained to kill, no one else to put him. Uh, but simply, he was a strong man. But one of his favorite things, wasn't it, Caleb and Mom? One of his favorite things was if you go to shake his hand, he would immediately catch your hand right here. And when he catch your hand right here, then he would just squeeze it. And he had a big hand. I mean, we're talking this guy six four, six five. His hands were probably big enough to, he could have been eight foot tall. I mean, he had big hands. And, uh, but he would do it, he loved it, especially if it was a young person. Uh, he would just grab their hand and just squeeze it until they cried, uncle, or whatever, you know. Uh, but he just, that was just part of him. But it was his way of letting you know that I've got a strong grip and I, I'm a strong man. And even uh, and as he got into his 80s, he was still doing that hand squeezing line. And he definitely would get your attention. And his hand, it was amazing because it, he would take your hand, and my hand's not really that small, I don't think, but he would take it and it just like it was just completely dwarfed in his hand. Just It was a big hand. But what I'm saying is, it does not compare it to the hand of God. When we think of God's hand and how strong it is, have you stopped to think about just the universe, how organized everything is and how that God set all the, the planets and the stars and everything into motion. He has them all coordinated in such a way that there's not a constant, <laughs> you know, everything crashing together. It's just perfect harmony because God did it with his strong hand as he put this universe together. This is what it says in Isaiah 8:11. For the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people. 
And when I think of that strong hand, another picture comes to mind is maybe somebody leading a group uh, into battle. And simply as he turns to his soldiers, his comrades, say, okay guys, let's go, let's go get him. <laughs> and he takes that hand like this. And that's the way I picture the Lord as he's showing his strong and mighty hand here. He's saying, come on guys, follow me, let's go, let's go get him. And folks, he's saying in one sense, go get the devil, <laughs> go get the world, and go get sinners and help them. You know, and, and we can just go as he's helping us charge into battle. And I think the great commission is in Matthew chapter 28. In uh, verses 19 through 20. But we see his strong hand as he leads in the battle. And then he says, And instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people. So he goes in the opposite direction. And he says basically that God shows us the strong and the right way to go. But he also shows us, hey, don't don't mess around with those people. Get away from those people. Those people will mess you up and they'll steal your strength from you. And how true that is. Then we see something else. As we make the hand of God, we see it's also a chastening hand. It says in Isaiah 9 12, and also in 9 21, and also in Isaiah 10 4, it says the same thing. Here's what it says For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. And so, folks, God is a just God, as I mentioned earlier. But God wants to help us when we do wrong. God just doesn't say, you did wrong, shame on you. And he just doesn't come up with, you shouldn't have done that, that's bad. But he tells us what we need to do. He tells us how that we can straighten the help of situation and what we should have done and what we can do now to make things right. Isn't that fantastic, God? That he helps us and gives us things to help us to be better and to learn from our mistakes and go forward for the cause of Christ. This, and again, in Isaiah 14, 26, this is the purpose that is purposed under the whole earth, and this is the hand that is stretched out upon all the nations. It's so easy to say, well, China's, China is a godless country, and they don't listen to God. Russia is a godless country and they don't listen to God. And we could go on down the list in North Korea and, and, and name a number of our enemies that they don't believe in God. But are you ready? God says very clearly that his hand is there too. That he's the one that controls those nations. And you say, but Pastor, they, they've done so much evil. I mean, China has been real heavy into human organ harvesting. Uh, and again, that's why that they take their uh, political prisoners and they cut out their organs and sell them to people here in the United States. And uh, I don't know about y'all, but that's that's pretty bad. And these are people that are alive, people that are healthy, and they're literally taking their organs and transplanting them into people here in our country and other countries. Uh, I mean, how sad and how unbelievable. And, and again, what I'm saying is God doesn't do that. But God is the one that will correct the situation. And God does other things. They are having economical problems in China like you can't believe. And yet they're considered the second most powerful economic uh, uh, country in the world right now. And then again, when it comes to military might, they're considered second to none. And I say that and hesitate as I say that. But what I'm saying is that God, he has a way of getting a hold of people. And no matter how ungodly they might be, it doesn't erase God. God still exists, and he shows his strong chastening hand. And again, as we look on in the scriptures, we find something else. As we look at him in Isaiah 19, 16, it says that God has a shaken hand. And it says this, as we look, it says, in that day shall Egypt be like unto women, not an interesting word and it shall be afraid and fear because the shaking of the hand of the Lord of hosts which he shaketh over it. now when somebody shakes their hand there are several laws that came to mind say there's a situation maybe there's been a wreck maybe a bridge is out or something like that something real drastic or uh, and, and somebody you know they don't know what to do so what do they do they come running out and go, stop 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 what do we do? We raise our hand, don't we? 
and we shake her hand. Or maybe she wants to say, hey, gosh, it may really icy. You're going to fall on that ice there. And they shake their hands to warn us. Maybe it's just something else. They go, oh, man, you don't feel like we're doing I just won the lottery. And I didn't even sign up for it. <laughs> <laughs> but again, the shaking of the hand. So God, if you please, God does get excited about a lot of things. And there's no question about it that God is concerned for us. And how many times has he maybe shook his hand trying to stop us to keep us from doing something that he knows if you do it, you're going to get in trouble. You're going to get hurt. And so God shakes his hand at us. It's amazing, our God, the way that he shows his love to us. But when we talk about the hand, isn't that something personal? Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm not in the habit of just touching anybody or everybody, you know what I'm saying? And there was a time I wouldn't touch anybody in any situation, and now as time's gone, as I've gotten older, I, I catch myself touching people, patting them on the back or on the elbow or whatever type thing. And uh, there's been some changes that have come. And uh, I don't know if it's because I'm older or because my sweet wife has rubbed off on me. But anyhow, something's happened to me. Uh, I've been changed. But what I'm saying, hands, that's a very, very personal thing. There's something you don't want to stand by touching. But there's something about the hand touching too that can be such a blessing. It can be so encouraging. I mean, somebody comes and pats you on the back and says, man, that was a good job. Thank you for what you did. That, that's encouraging. And it's nice to know that our God, if you please, wants to touch us with his hand and that he has. We see something else about the hand. It is a resting hand. Isaiah 25, verse 10. And just the first part of the verse, it says, for in this mountain, shall the hand of the Lord rest. I remember Lydia, she was sharing her story when they were finally going to uh, New Zealand to have the baby. And such a situation as many of you know that there was no flights out of the country for five months. And finally of all things, the director of their uh, of transportation had heard Matt preach in a Baptist church there in the capital in Port Vila when he heard him preach and he heard that Matt was having a problem couldn't get out of the country he said tell Matt and Lydia to up wish them out they'll be gone two days we'll have a New Zealand and even though there hadn't been any flight in months and, and the back up walk had caught people so off guard that uh, the, the plane was not crowded because people were totally caught off guard because nobody was flying out of the country you know and so Lydia said dad I got on the plane and it was so nice, she said, I, I could actually lay across the pews and lay my hand in my husband's lap. And she said, it was like, like God was holding me in his hands. It was like I was resting in the hand of God. And uh, I could almost hear Brett smiling on the other end that his lap was the hand of God. But anyhow, what I was trying to say is that she felt the special comfort of God being there and that she could rest in him and know that he loved her, that he loved the baby she was carrying, that he loved her husband. And it was just so exciting seeing that we can rest in God's hand. How many times have we had that in our situation where it seemed like the doctors couldn't give us any comfort, our friends couldn't give us any comfort, and maybe even your pastor couldn't give you any comfort, but we found comfort finally to please in resting in God's hands. And it's great that we have a God that loves us so much that he wants to help us in every situation that we might face and that he can. I'm so thankful for that personal calm feeling that we can get from God's hand. And then when I think of God's hand, there was another word that comes to mind. I think it is a delivering hand. It says in Isaiah 43, verse 13, it says, yea, before the day was I am he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall be, uh, shall let it, or that means reversal. And so again, how exciting as we think of God delivering. Uh, I, I think the situation when our son Levi was being born, we had a midwife lined up, and I kept asking her and said, now, Deborah, if, if, if you don't get here, what do we do, Dad? And she said, oh, I, I, I don't ever miss, I, I never miss a, a, you know, being there on time. I said, well, what if you do? And she said, oh, no, that's not going to happen. Don't even worry about it. I said, well, can you show me something I need to know so I can deliver my son or, uh, or whoever, whatever, but at the time we didn't know he was son yet, didn't we, Mom? 
So, because we didn't do the MRIs and all that stuff. And so she said, well, to do this and do that, but that's not gonna happen. And I said, so you never missed any? And she says, well, uh, there was one time, but it wasn't my fault. It was another midwife's fault. You know, so she told me that, so anyhow, whatever. And, and she said she delivered as many as, what, 52 babies in one week in a Fort Worth birthing center. I mean, she had experience delivering babies. I mean, she knew how to deliver, so to speak, you know. When things were happening with Levi, and he was coming so fast, which I thought was a good sign. And it looked like the cord was wrapped around his neck, which wasn't a good sign. And anyhow, I could go on and And finally, I just said, Lord, I need help in this delivery. I can't do this, but Lord, I know you've delivered all the babies of the world in one sense. And God took over. And several things happened in the delivery of Levi that stood out that were very unique, were they not known? Uh, the midwife was just totally shocked. She said, did you do something different? And I said, well, I did. And she said, what did you do? And I explained to her what I did. And she said, they need to do a study on that. <laughs> Anyhow, whatever. But what I'm saying, it's great that God can help us and, and that he's a delivering God, that he can deliver us from sin. He can deliver us from those things that would pull us down. He can deliver us from uh, our enemy, if you please. He can deliver us from <laughs> uh, some, from politicians that I say that I didn't say that. but anyhow he can deliver us from so many things and he wants to and sometimes it's just a matter of asking him and he will do that very thing he can deliver us from those that would hurt us and he can deliver us to those that can help us and so again what a tremendous God and he is a delivering God and then something else he is a creating and when I say that, I've got something else I was wanting to share with you about his creating hand. And actually, I guess I used that this morning, but simply, he's a creating hand. He says this in Isaiah 45, 12, I have made the earth and created man upon it. I even, my hands, have stretched out the heavens, and all their hosts have I commanded. And then it says in Isaiah 48, 13, my hand also hath laid the foundations of the earth and my right hand hath spanned the heavens. When I call unto them, they stand up together. Isaiah 64, 8, but now, O Lord, thou art our father, we are the clay, thou art the potter, we all are the work of thy hand. And so as I look at those verses there, it gets excited when we talk about God's creation. Look how you see it. Just the first verse I shared with you says, I have made the earth. So God makes it very clear. He said, I have made the earth. Okay. And when I think of the earth, I don't think of the, if you please, the dirt, the water, the trees and all that stuff along. But I think of everything that inhabits the earth too. And he's created everything that we see in this world in the way of life, if you please. And so, but then he goes on and he says, and have created man upon it. In other words, make it very clear that he's made man and he's put him in charge of the earth and that he's given us dominion over all the other animals that you place. And so again, you see his hand of creation. And then look at the next part of the verse, it says, I, even my, uh, even my hands has stretched out the heavens. So he, he stretched out his hands and there is a whole universe. Wow, we're talking about some powerful hands here, aren't we? Isn't it amazing and staggering what God has been able to do? And, and isn't it neat that in one sense, God's ready to shake your hand and say, hey, brother, I'm with you. Hey, sister, I'm ready to help you. Hey, son, hey, you. Yeah. I mean, there's such a personal relationship that we can have with God. And again, how exciting. But look at God's handiwork. It's all about us. And I'm so thankful that I can tell you about the hand, the hand of God. And I trust that you'll let God direct you with his hand as we go into this next week. It's been exciting seeing God bring new people along the way and seeing God bring old people back in the way. It's exciting when we see God doing things and we can truly say, well, we've seen the hand of God. <laughs> and again, 
we need God's hands to help us be what we need to be. And I'm so thankful that our God, no matter how great and how busy and how powerful he is, he's always ready to reach down and help us. He's always ready to lead us. He's always ready to comfort us. And he, he's always ready to do whatever it takes to, to get rid of the bullies that may come in our life. He's ready to take his hand and please the, the heal us if we need healing. He can take care of our, our, our marriages if they're broken or hurt in any way. He can take and he can put them together. It's amazing what God can do. That we can ask God to do things that huh, we wouldn't think about asking anybody else. Can you imagine somebody saying, President Biden, I'd like for you to fix my broken foot. <laughs> He'd say, well, that wouldn't happen. That sounds stupid. But does it doesn't sound stupid when say, God, could you help me with my broken foot? Are you ready? Who do you think can fix your foot? Biden or God? And, and maybe it's just a silly illustration. But what I'm trying to say is, God, he's done everything. Everything that we've seen. What an amazing God that we have. And his hands are ready to love you and love me. They're ready to comfort us. They're ready to deliver us from whatever we might be facing. They're ready to encourage us. Wow. And how many times has maybe God done something with you? Maybe he laid somebody on your heart and you thought, well, I'll just send them a thank you note or I'll just... Uh, I'll just call and let them know how much I appreciate them. And there you are. You'll be in the hand of God if you place a very real sense as you follow God's leadership in your life. And I don't know about you, but I, I like being in the hands of God. And, and what's the old saying? The idle hands are the shop for the, the devil? Uh, something like that. Idle hands are the devil's workshop. Okay, idle hands are the devil's workshop. There's so much truth in that, isn't there? The hands that are being used for God's glory. Wow. Isn't it amazing what we can do? Isn't it amazing that God can use you to do great and mighty, fantastic things as we yield to the hand of God? Would you stand to your feet as we begin our invitation? Lord, thanks for this time that we can come together and study your word. We're so thankful for it, and thank you for the hands that you've given us, Lord. They're just such a, an amazing thing. We just take them for granted all the time. And uh, Lord, we're so thankful that you're willing to show yourself to us, that, that you too have hands, so to speak, hands that can affect this whole world, and that we can be your hands and reach out to others. Lord, thank you for your hands that just keep everything from going into total chaos. Thank you, Lord, for your hands that have kept our country from being destroyed from within. Thank you, Lord, for your hands that have helped those that have been sick, those that have been at the point of death, and yet they've been revived as you touched them. Lord, thank you for those testimonies that we've heard so many times of your intervention. Help us to not take your handiwork lightly. Help us not to take you for granted. And Lord, forgive us for the times that we had. Help us to, want to be used by you to follow your hands, to follow your leadership. For we ask this in your son's precious name. Lord, we pray if there's anyone that's not saved, that they might call upon you now and say, Dear Lord, please forgive me my sins and come into my heart and become my Savior. Amen. The hands of God. And that deep, no doubt, so you can give testimonies about times that you saw God's hand working in your life. And what a blessing that we can see and feel. Yeah. I'm glad that we have such a personal God. It's a personal God. And it won't make any difference what your status in life might be. I don't want you to picture this, that the president says something, and so God said, maybe he's there to take care of me. God is. But you can be the poorest person on skin row, and God's ready to help you. And he will, if you'll let him.
and said it to me kind of seemed like the high and the mighty are the last ones to ask God for help and the ones that need God the most.